Good morning, Pleasant Hill. Good morning. Aren't we happy to be here this morning? And thank you, everyone, for who's, who's worshiping online with us. Um, we're happy to have you, and we would love to have you in our service. So if you would come join us, that would be great. Um, first of all, we have a few announcements in the bulletin if you want to pick it up. There's information about the yard sale. Pleasant Hill t-shirts are being sold, and we have a sign-up sheet. If you would like to buy a Pleasant Hill t-shirt, I'll put it up on the altar at the end, and you can sign up for a t-shirt. And also, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So this month, we want to show our appreciation for our pastor. We'll be taking up a love offering all month long. The basket for the love offering is right here, sorry. And then these are the tithes and offering in the the metal containers okay are there any prayer requests Reisner family okay 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 and I'd like to add Janie and Justin to our prayer list any other prayer requests? Unspoken? Unspoken with show of hands? Okay. Prayer requests? Mary for her surgery? Okay. Okay. All right. Anyone who can stand, if you would just stand for a moment, let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for all that you are and all that you do. Thank you for how you work in the background of that we don't even know about. And this week, I'm just asking for peace and comfort for those who are hurting and um, are in life-threatening situations. Father, I just pray that you put a calming hand on the people in our congregation that are shut-ins. And I just pray for healing and health and all the situations. Lord, I just want to lift up the Reisner family, and I ask that you give them a a special blessing of peace this morning. We pray for Allison and Wanga Things Visa. Um, we pray for surgeries. I just pray for uh, Linda Keaton. Lord, I just pray that you just um, let the Holy Spirit work in all the situations, even in the unspoken, Lord, where we don't know how to ask for what's needed in this congregation. I just ask that you put a special blessing on it. And I just ask them right now that you just open up our hearts for worship, fill us up with your love, help us to lay aside everything that um, is beating down on our, our minds or trying to control us and let us just worship and let us hear the word this morning and just fill us up so that we can go out into a lost and a dying world. I just thank you for all that you are and all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our call to worship. <clears throat> to the Lord with the Lord's Prayer, and let's just ask Him to open up our hearts and pour out our, our thankfulness and our blessings for Him this morning with the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Okay. <laughs> I get confused very easily. You're my all in all.
y'all may sit down, please. This morning, we are so blessed to have Amanda Davis bring our message. Amanda is our youth leader. So if you are worshiping online and you have youth age kids, I just pray that you'll let Amanda's words sink into your heart and bring your youth age kids to church. Um, so if y'all all give, help me give a round of a welcome to Amanda Davis. Make her feel welcome. Come on up, Amanda. Amanda, if it's okay, I'm going to say a little prayer with you before yes, we start. Yes, thank you. Father God, we just love you so much, and I just thank you for Amanda's obedience to bring the word this morning. I thank you for all that she does with the youth group, and Lord, I just pray that you give her peace in her heart and her spirit, and just let her pour out your words, um, and just um, let it be exactly what somebody needs to hear this morning. Help us to listen with open hearts and open minds, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Renee. I said at the first service, it's kind of nerve-wracking to be up here in front of everybody, but you all are friends and family, and I love Pleasant Hill. I love everybody that's here. I, I truly do. This is, this is definitely our home. My message today is about my journey to faith. And it's entitled, From Bitterness to Faith. I have a scripture reading from Ruth. Ruth is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And recently I did a study with the youth on the book of Ruth. Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me, and the Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. And this is Ruth 1, 20 through 21, and I use the New International Version. So for me, two times in my life have really stuck out as um, where I've let bitterness kind of rule my life, be in my life. And like Naomi, I felt like the Lord had forgotten all about me. The first time was when Brian and I had first gotten married, and we were trying to get pregnant. And a lot of things stacked against me. I'd um, been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, and hypothyroidism. All those things lead to infertility. And so for me, it was like a triple whammy. I felt like there was no way I was ever going to have kids, and that the Lord had just deserted me. And in all this frustration, trying to get pregnant, not being successful, and not only not being successful, but the methods that we had to go through with, the, with drugs and things like that led me to hurt more because of my endometriosis. The pain was, was the worst of my life. It was horrible. And the pain with the bitterness or with the frustration of not being able to have a baby wore me down to where I felt bitter, more and more bitter as we went on. And... It came to the point where one day I even had the thoughts that maybe God wasn't real. That was how I could explain that as a good person, I wasn't able to have babies. But all of these drug addicts, all of the teenagers who weren't even trying to get pregnant were having babies. That's how I justified it. But at the time, I wasn't in church. I had been to church some as a child growing up with my grandmother. Well, I didn't grow up with my grandmother, but I would go to church with my grandmother. And just, you know, sporadically throughout my childhood, adulthood. But I did believe in Jesus. I believed in God. I read the Bible some, but not a lot. But I did pray. And so I knew enough to know that this line of thinking that, you know, God wasn't real, I knew it was wrong. So at that time... And I'm pretty sure that was in, in January. I remember January for some reason. I knew it was time for Brian and I to go to church. We had already been talking about trying to find a church and visiting around to area churches. And you'll hear this again, but things don't happen by accident. We had visited 
several churches. We've even, we even visited Pleasant Hill once because we'd gotten married here before we started going here. We got married in 2010. It's almost our 11th anniversary. But um, we visited on uh, July the 4th weekend, and it might have been July 4th that day. And we visited, to the later, visited the later service. And so things were kind of, I guess, just disjointed. And it might not have been a good time to visit, but we just, we just didn't know. But like I said, we visited several, several different churches. And one day, we were in Subway, of all places, and saw a friend of Brian's from college that came to the early service. And he's like, yeah, y'all need to come visit the early service. We've got one at 845. It's great. You know, I think you'll really like it. And I don't know how long it was before we began coming to the early service or before we tried the early service, but we did like it. And we've been here ever since, is what I said. We're probably about 10 years because um, we'd been married for a little while before we started coming to church here. Um, there were just so many times in those early days especially that I felt like God was really, I mean, those sermons were right, aimed at me. I learned so much. I learned that, you know, the bad things that happen in the world aren't because I'm being punished for something. I guess it is. But because of sin. It's because of sin and Adam and Eve and that we're all sinners. It doesn't matter if we perceive ourselves to be a good person or a bad person. We still sin. And then I learned more and more that God would use this hard time in my life to glorify him and that I should share my story about what God did for me, for us. I was always, I grew up shy. I would have never spoken in public. I would have never been over the children. I would have never been over the youth ever in my life. But I think that God has really opened my heart to to Pleasant Hill, just in general. I don't know that I could have done this anywhere else but here, and I appreciate it. And I also, I credit my infertility with leading me to Jesus. God used that time, that hard, hard time of my life to increase my faith, to bring me to faith. Even though that when I was going through this, I didn't realize what was going on, it's when you're on the other side of it that you can really know that, that God was using that time to draw me to him. And this week, again, nothing happens by accident. When I was reading Where the Red Fern Grows with my students, there was this passage that was just like, oh my goodness, yes, that's exactly it. That's how I felt. And it really um, struck me with God's awesomeness, like just how awesome he is. Still mumbling names, over and over, I glanced up. There, carved in the white bark of a sycamore tree, was a large heart. In the center of the heart were two names, Dan and Ann. The name Dan was a little larger than Ann. It was wide and bold. The scar stood out more. The name Ann was small, neat, and even. I stared, unbelieving, for there were my names. They were perfect. I walked over and picked up my pups. Looking at him, I said, Your name is Dan. I'll call you old Dan. Looking at her, I said, your name, little girl, is Ann. I'll call you little Ann. It was then I realized it was all too perfect. Here in this fisherman's camp, I'd found the magazine and the ad. I looked over at the old sycamore log. There I'd asked God to help me get two hound pups. There were the pups, rolling and playing in the warm sand. I thought of the old KC baking powder can and the fishermen, how freely they had given their nickels and dimes. I looked up again to the names carved in the tree. Yes, it was all there like a large puzzle, piece by piece, each fit perfectly until the puzzle was complete. I could not have, it could not have happened without the help of an unseen power. That evening, I had a talk with my mother. I told her about praying for the two pups, about the magazine and the plans I'd made, I told her how hard I had tried to find names for them and how strange it was finding them carved in the bark of a sycamore tree. With a smile on her face, she asked, Do you believe God heard your prayer and helped you? Yes, Mama, I said. I know he did, and I'll always be thankful. You see, Billy had wanted two hound pups more than anything and wanted them so much that it made him physically ill. 
And one day he stumbled in this fisherman's camp that where he was at that moment. He stumbled over a magazine, and in the very back was an advertisement for those puppies that he so desperately wanted. And that day he prayed for God to help him get those pups. He knew, though, that he would have to work hard, and he did. He worked for two years to earn $50 in order to buy those pups. And he got them. The second time that bitterness took hold of me was when my mother got sick. It was the summer of 2014, and she had had a large knot appear on her head. But this wasn't just any knot, but a tumor that was growing out of her skull. She was diagnosed with lung cancer, and by the time it was found, it was stage four. It was too late to do anything because it had already spread all over her body to the point where she even became paralyzed. We found out about the cancer at the beginning of summer 2014, and on August 27, 2014, she was gone. She had died early in the morning as I stood beside her telling her that it was okay if she went and that I knew she was tired. This time, the bitterness snuck up on me more subtly. Every day after she was gone, I felt myself pulled further and further away from God. I don't know why, but it was almost like I was trying to punish him for taking my mama away. I continued coming to church, though, and participating in my normal activities, but I didn't feel the same inside. I would lost the fire for the Lord that I'd previously enjoyed. In conjunction with this, too, was... Um, most of you remember the little girls that we had, the three little girls. This was also a time where they were about to um, leave and go back with their biological mother. And so it, it, was, it was really hard that time in my life. But not the November after Mom passed, but the November after that, I was asked to go to a women's retreat, pretty much made to go to a women's retreat. And um, I don't... I'm pretty sure it was that year, but um, that year after 2015. But I know it was on my birthday, so I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. I wanted to spend the, my birthday with my family. And I think part of me, too, just was pulling away from God. And so I didn't feel like I should go or that I needed to go. But I'm glad I went. The conference resulted in, me, in softening my heart and helping me heal like I needed to. A friend of mine was beside me, not by accident, and while we were waiting on one of the performances to, um, to happen, then um, she began talking to me, and I began to tell her some of the things that was going on. And I don't remember what she said, and I don't think that was important, but she really helped me to, to heal at that moment. Then the rest of the conference, I was able to really worship God like I needed to, like I felt like I should. God works in our lives all the time. Nothing, nothing is by accident. And I told my kids I wouldn't mention them in the early service, but I can mention them to y'all because they're not here. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, I have five kids now. I have five good kids. They're not perfect. They are t well, all but one's a teenager, and they are rambunctious, but they fit in our family so well. I don't know how, on, how I could have gotten a more perfect family for us. I really don't. I think they get embarrassed when I mention them. But <laughs> Today, I think my faith is as strong as ever because I feel like God didn't abandon me. He didn't abandon me in my times of hardship, just like he didn't abandon Naomi. Yes, she had a hard time in her life. Her husband and both of her sons had died, leaving her pretty much alone, but she wasn't alone either. She had her daughter-in-law, Ruth, who refused to leave her. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, "'Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. 
Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. And we all know who David was. So not only did God provide Naomi and Ruth with food, but he also provided them with a home and a family. And not just any family, but from this line, Jesus would be born. God took Naomi's bitterness, not only grew her faith, but also Ruth's. Ruth was a Moabite, and they were a heathen country. Moab was a heathen country. And God took my bitterness and used it as a way to grow my faith. And I hope that if you have bitterness in your heart, that you'll let God use that to grow your faith. That you'll realize that nothing does happen by accident. And even though we have some of the things in our lives that aren't meant for good, that we can use them for good and we can use them for the glory of God. If you would, bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for the blessings you've given us. Lord, please just bless this congregation as we go throughout the rest of the week. Heal those who are hurt or suffering. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. If we could all stand for the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remain standing for the invitation. <coughs> Pastor Appreciation Month. The wicker basket is for Pastor Appreciation and it'll be here all month long. And then don't forget that Pleasant Hill um, runs on our tithes and offerings and pours out into the community and it's very good stewards of our tithes and offerings. So as God leads you, um, give your tithes and offerings. Uh, now let's get our traveling orders. You want to? Um, let's go to the Lord with just a word for a second and think about how we take what we've learned today and what God's poured out into our heart out into a lost and dying world. Father God, thank you so much for Amanda and her, her obedience. Father, and I ask this week that you just open up our hearts to those people who are hurting, um, who may be uh, bitter at God or, or moving away from God because hardship in their life. 
Lord, and I just ask that you give us words. Your word says that you'll give us the words in season. We don't have to plan ahead of time. And I pray that you just make us obedient to be the stewards of your words like you've made Amanda obedient this morning. Thank you for filling us up and for this journey and help us to go out as a shining light in a lost and dying world with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church.